Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer and welcome back to Project Cars 2. We're at Imola today and we're going to do some hyper car racing. I'm in a Lamborghini Veneno and the field is, we're technically Road B, that Lamb Lamborghini. The Lambo is Road B and we've got Road A and then we've got Road C. So we're right in the middle. And the reason I did this is all the, the famous hyper cars and supercars that we've seen over the years they're all kind of mixed in here you can't get them all in one class but I wanted to race against La Ferrari and the 918 and the, the GT and the P1 and all the all the cars we've got realism settings maxed out we've got the AI set on 40 for skill and 25 for aggression tire wears on fuel use is on sorry I'm multitasking here as we get started all right that's enough of me talking let's race so we're going to go 25 laps, and we'll see how it goes. And I'll tell you some other things that are going on, too, while we're driving. So, well, you know what? Let me, let me wait till I get through the first lap, because this is always a little interesting. That guy. And you know, I have the damage on. And when I try to avoid these cars, part of it is practical. I don't want to damage my car and make it harder to compete. But I think there's also on some level that is the immersion. And I'm thinking, man, if I take my million dollar car out on a Saturday morning to race with a bunch of my rich weirdo friends, the last thing I want to do is take that million dollar car and scuff it into somebody's door. We can get that. Ah. Got old F1. Beautiful. If we can get through this first lap, then that opens things up a little bit. I've also, you'll have to let me know what you think of the audio. I've been having a hell of a time getting the mix right. And part of it is that. I find that when you make a make an adjustment, like if you change the in-game volume in something like Project Cars, it stays. But then, of course, it's like subordinate to the to the game volume, right? So I can make my in-game volume whatever I want it to be. But if I turn down the master volume, then I can't hear. Well, same thing apparently is true of microphone. Although you really don't use it as often for, for that to really be something that I've thought about. But in the same way that there's a master output setting for how loud the volume that we hear is, I guess there's also a master input setting. And Shadowplay has a microphone level as well, but it's subordinate to the master level, if that makes sense. So as I'm trying to chase this, what I'm finding is the game volume and the system volume tends to stay the same, but the microphone volume is, is subject to other inputs, and I may do something in, you know, as I'm trying to sort all this stuff out, I was run, I've been running some different audio mixing apps, testing them. Well, some of them, when you install them and uninstall them, they change master volumes. So then what happens is, see what had happened was, everything's the same in Shadowplay and everything is the same as far as game volume and system volume and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, these are the same settings that I had before, but they're not. Something is different. So then when I listen, because I try to review these before I post them. And you know everything's different I'm like well what what could possibly be different I didn't do anything I didn't do anything so it's I just want everything to be perfect you know I do 
and the fact that we have so many different sims running and they have vastly different volume levels like this is this game is so much louder than something like Euro Truck right I gotta I gotta start making moves here I'm getting getting past ah that's not making a move opposite of making a move right starting now okay I'm gonna get serious right now so yeah that's one thing And the way this came about, the reason we're in a Lambo. We were due for open wheel. A while ago, like two weeks ago, we were due for open wheel. And we were due for a set of Corsa. And you know, I try to alternate a set of Corsa. Okay, so uncalled for. Yeah, man, when you crank up the aggression, they just... Not having it, yeah. Get off me. Thank you. So, so we were due for a set of Corsa, and then that whole F1 thing, where I downloaded the F1 pack for a set of Corsa, and everything was cool, but then I realized we wouldn't be able to do an F1 season because you can't change the steering ratio, and we would not have been able to get around the Lowe's hairpin at Monaco, and you cannot have an F1 season without Monaco. It's like trying to have a sandwich without bread. So, I had been reluctant to get on F1 2017. I mean, it's 2018. I didn't even have F1 2017. But, I had to do it. So, I had to do it, and so that, right, so naturally it would be like, okay, well, so you got F1 2017, where, where's the F1 video? Well, I'll tell you, I got to stay off that rev limiter, I'm trying, but man, it, that last little bit, like, there's no, there's not really a red line in this car, like, it just, it just goes. See what I mean? There's, like, it's, we're fine, and then it's on the rev limiter. There's not really any warning. Can we pass you already? I am not ready for you to see me racing F1. It's unbelievably hard, and the standard that I've set, there are a couple people that I watched, race F1 2017. I'm big fans of their channels. Right? That guy just came in on me. I saw that. I didn't imagine that. You know, I want the game to be difficult, but I don't know how I feel about the blocking. Right, so uh, so that's my standard. Those people that I watch, you know, the way they race. And I'm nowhere close. I hope to be. But at the moment, not even close. Apparently, not even close on uh, on here either. Come on now, must focus. Right, so um, so that's what we're doing in in project cars, and that's what we're doing in a hypercar. Because we did, we were due for open wheel, and we never did do our open wheel race. We ended up doing uh, old sports cars. We did the air-cooled RSR from uh, Road America, Road Atlanta, 
sorry, in a set of Corsa. And that means we're due for Project Cars. And I guess we could do open wheel here. I thought about doing Indy Cars from, because this weekend is the Indianapolis Grand Prix or the GP of Indy or whatever it is, but it's the road course race that they do in the infield at Indy. So I thought maybe we would do some IndyCar road racing. But it just didn't, I don't know. Just wasn't feeling it. So we're here instead, and we haven't, I don't think we've done exotics yet. In all the races that we've done, I don't think we've done exotics one time. One time. So I figured we would do it. And you know, what's funny is, I love these cars, it's sort of as ideas. But I don't necessarily love these cars to drive, and I mean I love the technology. I love the just how ridiculous they are. They're not really my my kind of car. You know, if somebody somebody offered me one, I would take it. But if I had the resources to get something like a Lamborghini, I don't think I would. It's not really my style. I'm I'm more a more 911 guy. And I know there are certainly German exotics. It's hard to explain. It's just not not my thing. I like the idea, and I've heard this for years, but the 911, you can buy a 911, any level, from base model, Carrera, all the way up to the Turbo or a GT2 or something. You can buy a 911 in California. They take take possession of it with eight miles on the odometer and immediately drive it coast to coast at 120 miles an hour. No problem. And you can't really say the same thing about particularly Italian exotics. You know, they definitely need a lot of love and attention. And I know they're a lot more reliable than they used to be, but they're still exotics. Okay. Just a different animal than than something like a 911 or even a Corvette. You know, Corvette it's kind of a bad rap because it's just a, just a big V8 American production car, but a Z Corvette is absolutely a weapon. Around the outside, around the outside. There we go.
Well, this is a, it's an interesting mix up in front of us here. I'm going to try to pit uh, round lap 15. Try to get past all these gangsters right now. The blocking, man. The blocking is no joke. You gotta be kidding me. Get away from me. Ah. Uh, like I, I get you know the, the idea of, of aggression and skill being two separate things. But this is 25. It goes up to 100. You know, how, how aggressive are the drivers going to be at 100? And where, where's the line between aggression and just being obnoxious? And uh, doing things that would get you... That would get you a blocking penalty. Right, okay. I was just starting to go and I just noticed that front end damage. Some of that bumping we've been doing, I guess, has caught up to me. But like I was saying earlier, that's, that's kind of the point. I mean, I want, I don't want to just be able to bash my way through. That's, that's a problem and we're going to get dinged for that because we've got a mandatory pit stop. And repairs are turned on. So they're going to fix that when we pull in and it's going to cost us some time. So I like the idea. I mean, I can't... I would love to get through a race with zero bumping. It hasn't happened yet. And in fact, that's one of the problems that I'm having in F1 is... Have the damage turned on there as well. And you know you can't have any contact at all in open wheel. There's no you know, rubbing's racing, but not in open wheel. Right.
And part of it is being on gamepad. Part of it is just focusing and being a good sim race driver. And I know, like, there's a for league racing and the, the super competitive uh, sim racers. I know there's like a separate category for wheel and gamepad. because it's so different to be on gamepad versus wheel and I know like there there are people that race there are people that race on gamepads and that's part of their reputation or whatever is that like you know, they can turn those amazing lap times on a gamepad. Well, that's where I want to be. I'm just not there yet. And I feel like, I, don't, I wouldn't say I get, like, latitude for it, you know, that I'm on a gamepad and not a wheel. It's not an excuse or anything. It's just harder. For me, anyway. So I need to work up to that. And that's, like here, I, I don't know how many times I've been off half a dozen times and the bumping and everything like I know that's not the people that I watch race don't do that and I don't want to do it either now the difference is some of the people that I watch race it's a lot of editing and I'm okay with that but it does make me wonder sometimes Because, like, for me, if I start a race and it's going badly, I'll just turn the recording off. Start over. It's the only thing that makes sense. Because, at a, I mean, for, for some races, if you screw up early, if I screw up early, there's no chance. There's no way we're going to win. Like, right now, we're in second in category, ninth overall, halfway through the race. We could do this. But if I spun on the first lap or something, eh, not likely. So I'll go ahead and stop and I'll re-record. But I'll record the whole thing. I won't splice together two races. And I feel like, now it's very entertaining. And they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and hundreds of thousands of views per video. So good for them. But I think some of those folks you know, you're kind of seeing a composite, like a greatest hits race. And the way I do it, you know, I leave the fail in. So I want to be better, but I also don't want to hold myself to an impossible standard. We're on mediums. I was going to go to lap 15. They're holding up okay, so I think I might go to lap 17 or 18 because during our pit stop, they're going to put on soft. And I don't want those to have to last too long.
You know what else is funny is I've been turning so many laps in F1 cars. that this million dollar 220 mile an hour hypercar seems a little tame by comparison. Right, you know what I mean? that I was turning on on Imola in in the Mercedes at the F1 car at W09 Chasing that guy. Tried to late break on him. I guess I succeeded. So that was a little too late. Yeah, the blocking, man. No joke. Right, well, I'm going to leave it up there, the aggression. I guess I feel like turning it down now. I, I've been gradually increasing the skill and the aggression, and I feel like you know, as my skill goes up, I want the skill of the AI to go up as well, and I can't imagine why I would ever feel comfortable turning it down, if that makes sense. You know, I hopefully I'm continuing to get better. So I want them to continue to get better as well. tires. Alright, so we can pit any time now.
tires are definitely going. Right, so let's go. Let's go at least 16 or 17 and just tough it out. Yeah, cars just starting to float all over. That was different. First in category, and we've got, what, uh, 12 seconds between us and third? Or no, we're in third between us and second. Well, I mean, I'm still turning PB laps on those tires, but I am getting kind of used to the track, too. You know what I'm saying. We'll see. We're on 17 now, so it can't be any earlier than now. Let's go 18. Something I really like about F1 2017 is the the AI won't fight you for position if they're blue flag, right? If they're because you know in F1 they're all F1 cars, but there there's like two tiers or maybe three tiers, and there's no way you know Williams is going to block a Ferrari. Because they're 
there's just no reason to. You know, a Red Bull might block a Renault or something because they're 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 both far enough like up the ladder. Does that make sense? Concentrate. Damn. I didn't forget about it. You know what I'm saying. There, you see it in Formula One all the time. There's no point for some cars to to even race with other cars because it's, even if you can hold them off for a corner or two, you're not going to hold them off for the rest of the race. Whereas other cars can. You know, they, they actually can race together. And I feel like the AI in F1 2017 acknowledges that or, or you know, whatever. It, it does that. And I feel like in Project Cars, ah, it doesn't. So, like, that back marker got a little racy. And I feel like in real life, that car would do everything it could it, on the demo well, ought to do everything it can to get out of our way. Yeah, tires are gone. Perfect timing. Imola also has about the shortest hit entrance. For speed limit. Oh, first just pitted two. Oh, no way. Perfect. This is going to be a long pit stop, though. Right, I'm going to hit the vape. Oh, this is kind of exciting. I don't know if he's got any damage. Does not. Damn it. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. I'm hoping some of those cars still need to pit. I'm hoping. Okay. Suddenly interesting. Fresh tires, softer compound. And we're back to ninth with six laps to go. Down by a minute. Oh. Tires aren't quite warmed up yet. Right. Must focus.
that's category right in front of us, right? Yeah. That's if we can get this guy. We can win class. Of course, that a little bit. He was. I feel like he was slowing down enough. I don't know if he's going to pit or not, but. Probably didn't need to get after it like that. Whatever. Too late. We did. You know, the other thing the AI will do is pit with like one or two laps to go. That's kind of a weird thing. It does happen. But it happens less if it's a year that F1 is not doing fuel. And, and the thing is, I don't know if they're ever going to do fuel again. I think that era is over. But you can always... You can always baby tires. You know, if your tires are totally, totally going away, you can always baby tires. And try to squeeze another couple laps out of them. If you run out of fuel, you run out of fuel. I feel like seeing very, very late race pit stops is kind of a kind of a thing of the past in the era where we're not refueling, at least in Formula One. You know, just to just to get a little splash of fuel to be able to finish the race. 
And even if it means dropping from like you know, second to seventh, seventh is still a points position. Versus DNF where you get nothing. So I'm not, I don't think the AI, you know, is trying to replicate that late race pit stop strategy. You know, late race unplanned pit stop. I think it just, the algorithm says you need tires and it pulls in and gets tires or whatever. But it's sort of, I find it to be a little bit unrealistic when you're racing and racing and there's one or two laps to go and the AI just suddenly pits for no, not no reason, but you know what I mean. In real life, they would in all likelihood stay out for another couple laps. That. Is it the first one we've seen today? I feel like we haven't seen him before. We have six seconds to go. We want fourth. I don't think it's going to happen unless there's pit stops. Round and keep it 
right. Let me get it pulled over here. Folks, thank you so much for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Project Cars 2. We'll see you next time. I'm going to do a quick replay here. We'll check out that last lap. Right on. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. Take care.